This is the basic law of life, and dear listeners, it is spiritual in its nature. If man failed to do everything in his power to protect his life, as a result of such neglect lost his life, then the destiny for which the soul came to earth would end there. Without life, a body or medium to function through spiritual attainment would be impossible, ladies and gentlemen. Spirituality would then be forfeited. You see, if man's life was threatened without cause on his part and he failed to do everything in his power to prevent death, he would then be guilty of three actual crimes. He would first of all permit the enemy to commit murder. Next, he would be committing suicide by failing to protect the most precious possession given to man by his Creator. And worst of all, he would end whatever his destiny might be, the purpose for which body, mind, and life had been given to him. And I believe it's to learn something. In one respect, man is forced to be a warring, not a murdering creature. And I might inject here that the Ten Commandments does not say in its original form, thou shalt not kill. It says, ladies and gentlemen, and you can check this, if you wish, go to the original Hebrew and Greek, it says, thou shalt not murder. So in one respect, man is forced to be a warring, not a murdering creature. From his birth, the law of self-preservation forces him to be on guard against every inimical force attempting to destroy him by one means or another. He must be on the alert to prevent man, natural forces, or his own carnal desires to betray him into acts of degradation. Man is a warring creature. But his war, I tell you his war is an honorable war. It is one of protection. First himself, so that he may protect those he is responsible for, but in doing so must not take unfair advantage of others, nor be guilty of unrighteousness. The nature of this was and is actually spiritual. It is the battle of righteousness against evil. It is a war biblically spoken of as taking place in heaven because it is waged within man's spiritual nature. He fights to fulfill destiny and to finally create heaven on earth for himself and others who fight. By the war of righteousness, wherein there is no selfishness, he attains the consciousness which makes him a man, knowing both good and evil, having chosen good to attain the promised sonship. Notice, you must choose. You must choose. Each and every one of you listening to this broadcast tonight must choose, and you must choose very quickly. You might ask, is there actually a need for some form of evil in the life of man? Was this, together with some form of fear, ordained in the beginning? And I say nothing has been ordained, but if the divine law is to be fulfilled in the life of man, then it is certainly necessary that he, according to sacred concepts, become a crusader in God's cause, and not exist as a negative, effortless, uncreative, unproductive creature, a leech, a parasite upon the rest. The first command is that he must become a man in the true sense of the term, and this implies that he must prepare himself to meet the enemy that is ever alert to destroy the best that he has created. He must meet evil as the soldier meets the enemy. Doing this in the righteousness of his conscience neutralizes fear. 
Many of you call and ask me, Bill, aren't you afraid? My answer has always been and always will be no. No, no, and no. I know from where I have come and I know where I am going. I know who I am and I know that I possess a soul. I fear the actions of no man. I fear the judgment of no man. I fear only the judgment of my God. And I know that if I am doing what is right, I need not ever fear that judgment. And therefore, I am not afraid.